Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Earlier today, SpaceX's Mark 1 Starship prototype suffered a catastrophic failure. Uh, there wasn't any official coverage, but fans in the area had cameras trained on the massive stainless steel structure. And in a fraction of a second, we see the top come off, go flying and hang in the air for 10 to 12 seconds before crashing back to Earth. Huge amounts of gas vent out the front. The bottom blows out and we get, uh, yeah, we just, we get liquid, you know, gases, whatever, blowing around everywhere. It's generally believed, based on the closures, that what they were doing was testing the pressure, uh, how secure the tanks were, making sure there were no leaks. But uh, clearly, they pushed the pressures up higher than expected. So, yeah, to put it simply, as Senator Collins might say, the front fell off. That's the lo oxy liquid oxygen tank bulkhead and about 10 feet off the tank structure as well tore off uh, probably along the weld line between the bulkhead and the rest of the uh, structure. It was pushed upwards with such force that it rose to an altitude of probably greater than 100 meters but it's very hard to tell because no camera gave the entire camera angle uh, based on that flight time it definitely could have been as high as 150 meters and therefore higher than the Starship Hopper. But I'm not going to say that that is much of a consolation prize. So yeah, as I said, the footage and information of this event have come from the fans on the ground there that have been pointing cameras at this. We have Boca Chica Gal, Boca Chica Maria, at La Padre, and many, many other people who have done you know, great service to the SpaceX fan community by continuing to provide these updates. We love everything you do, and we'd miss a lot of stories if it wasn't for your contributions. And from the footage that we have taken from miles away, we have one tiny frame which seems to show the front splitting. And then the next thing we know, the split runs along the entirety of the circumferential weld, splitting the top off. And then over the next couple of frames, it goes flying with extreme speed. Now, releasing that pressure at the top then sends a pressure wave through the vehicle. And you can see the ice that has formed in a couple of locations flaking off as the force hits it. And then, of course, you've got material blowing out the bottom. So it looks like the integrity of the entire vehicle is compromised and plumbing has been blown open. This is pretty much a write-off now that I look at it. But yeah, ultimately, it's very clear that it's the welds that look like they're failing rather than the stainless steel structure. And that is kind of, you know, that's kind of to be ex expected. We actually have this really good photo showing the front bulkhead and the, uh, you know, the skin as they were being brought down before they were welded in place. And this is exactly the section which goes flying, although there's some other debris that goes in other directions. So some people have asked, okay, we've been cr moving this thing around on cranes. Is it possible that that has damaged it? And that seems plausible. And when, because you think the whole thing weighs about 200 tons. Well, 200 tons is absolutely nothing compared to the atmospheric pressure on these two nine meter wide bulkheads at each end of the section. That works out to something like 1200 tons of, pr of pressure for every atmosphere of internal pressure. And it's very likely that they were testing at three to five atmospheres of pressure. I mean, sort of based on rough estimates of the acceleration and you know, back of the envelope calculations, I'm thinking four to five atmospheres of pressure where this catastrophic failure actually happened. Obviously, this means that the Mark 1 is out of commission permanently, uh, but actually people are now looking back to their rumor mill and saying, well, there was rumors that the Mark 1 wasn't going to fly anyway. And yeah, I mean, it's now possible based on this information that's leaking out that this was sort of a destructive test intended to find a breaking point in the tank. However, it's also likely that they didn't expect a level of failure which was quite this catastrophic. They might have expected weld to split and gas to shoot out rather than a whole chunk of tank going flying 100 meters in the air. Also, uh, yes, before people pointed out, the image you, images you saw and I retweeted of the guy hitting the starship 
with a hammer, a big sledgehammer to fix some problem. That guy is not responsible for the simple reason that those images come from Florida, whereas this event was the Mark I in Boca Chica. They have the Mark II still building in Florida. As regarding what goes next, there was immediate speculation and Elon has already confirmed that the Mark III, which is going to be built with the new techniques, uh, that is going to be the new target vehicle. Mark I is dead, it's going to the junkyard. It was a pathfinder, which it gave them all sorts of information on how to build these things, but it's now already outdated with the new knowledge that has been delivered. So yeah, we can expect that the Mark III will be built with all the new techniques to make sure the front doesn't fall off. It'll be have no cardboard, no cardboard derivatives, paper, string, sellotape, all that is out. No, they're going to build this with continuous roll of sheet stainless steel with a single weld to make the loops, and that's going to be the main structural hoop. There is no doubt many other changes that have happened. You know, they, they built this thing up and they no doubt found all sorts of problems with how the fins actuate, how the legs attach, and I can only speculate as to what changes we'll actually see. So look, at this point, it's obviously a bit of a setback, but equally, we kind of expected setbacks to happen on Elon time. I mean, there'll be a lot said about how failed tests like this are a great way to learn and solve problems, but I believe that Elon Musk is, himself is once quoted as saying, all things being equal, he would prefer to learn from success rather than failure. Another open question is what happens to the bits of this that weren't near the accident? In particular, the nose cone and the fins on the front are, weren't anywhere near it, so those might still be completely valid and might be still used for testing, or they might already have been made redundant by a new experiment, and a new understanding of how this thing works. So ultimately, this is a bit of a setback on Starship's road to orbit. Of course, that is a metaphorical road. It's a Starship. Where it's going, it doesn't need roads. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.